Hello everybody, Tuncha Wolf here from St. Vincent College. Practice just ended. Not a whole lot to report today. No, there yeah. isn't a yeah. whole lot to yeah. report. We have weather conditions that right. precipitated. Well, there was no precipitation. Oh, right. pun, pun, intended. Pun, pun intended. Pun intended, yeah. Precipitated going back in because right. of lightning. You know, uh, they, they did go line, go line drill. It was only, what, five, six plays? At the most, and, yes. And uh, by the time we got down there, because we came up here, it was, uh, you know, we saw the last. I did see Jordan Dangerfield make a great play on Jalen Samuels in the backfield. That was a highlight of what I saw. Today was an interesting day. Uh, defense won goal line short yardage, or it was just goal line, right. goal line drill. Um, and I think part of the reason was David DeCastro and Marcus Gilbert weren't practicing. Well, they got the uh, uh, Veterans the, Day off. They had the Motivator Cup yes. uh, uh, injury. Yeah, there so, you go. So they, they did, but you know, it's kind of interesting because tomorrow is an off day. Right. Today was a light day. Yesterday was in shells. Shells. So. Well, tonight was supposed to be a heavy day. Right, they right. were supposed to yeah. bang. You got family night. Nobody wants to get themselves beat up in front of their family. Right. So certainly you were expecting it was going to be a hard hitting affair. But after the lightning rolled in, then they went to the locker room, cooled off for an hour. The hardest thing to do is to refire yes. those engines up. Right. Because when you had that layoff, yeah. all that intensity, all that sort of get ready to go for the goal line, it just kind of fizzled. Out. Yeah, but you know what? The one of the great things about this week, Wolf, is it's the first preseason game. Yes. One thing about training camp is you get sick of hitting the same people every day. When that week of when the week of the first preseason game comes, man, there is a, an energy. I mean, there was energy out here. Right. Uh, maybe it was because of the lightning, but there was energy. But the opportunity to play a game and not just practice. Uh, as you're looking at the Philadelphia Eagles Thursday night game. Uh, you you can tell that there is a sense of oh man we're going to play a game and and this is like the real first test uh, especially for the rookie guys no question about it I mean back in our day that first preseason game was huge because right. it meant number one you got air conditioned room right. number two you had a nice mattress and number three you could order on the room service menu right you know because we stayed in a hotel the night before a game so we loved that yeah yeah you know but for these guys you're coming up to this first big test and you happen to be opening at the home of the reigning Super Bowl champions. Right, you know, and what Wolf was referring to, we used to stay in those dorms down there, St. Bonaventure, all right? There was no air conditioning. Yep. There was no cable. Yep. Uh, and the mattresses were for diminutive people. Yep, And, yep. and mm -hmm. so when we got into a hotel, the night before our first preseason game, Man, preseason it was game great. there was cable, there yeah. was a phone, there wasn't just two pay phones on every floor. Absolutely. You weren't fighting over the phone. Well, you and I were fighting over well, the phone. Yeah, but, but, uh, uh, okay. but you, and so, but, and then you played a game. Right. And the uh, pressure and the excitement and the energy and the focus of it a football game. It draws you forward. Right, especially as a young player, you get a chance to make your mark because you may come to this football team and you may be at a position that's right. rich with talent, but you know that you're going to play for everyone else in the National Football League. That if you don't Absolutely. make it here, you've got an opportunity you've to play You've got your resume else. on videotape. Yeah. And right. it's out there. And so I'm looking forward to three guys that I want to see. Yeah. One would be Farrington Huguenin. Yeah. I want to see what he does when he has a live go. Right. When there's no constricting boundaries of practice, etiquette, right. things like that. And he gets a full on go against. Um, some offensive tackle. Right. Another one I want to see is Matt Thomas. Right. Matt Thomas is a guy that intrigues me. I was talking to him at lunch today, and just listening to him, and we were talking about, well, you know, you you look like an outside linebacker. And what did he say? He goes, but I like the inside. Yeah. But he did play some outside yeah. in practice today. And the third guy that I'm looking at is R.J. Prince, right. number 64. They call him the Fresh Prince of North of Carolina. Yeah. Um, but he's a offensive tackle guard, and he is an intriguing guy, very strong through the core. Right. And uh, he. He's kind of uh, he's an undrafted free agent, as I said. Kind of one of these guys that um, we'll see we'll see what he can do. Right, he's right. looking good right now. I'm looking forward to seeing Kean Adams. He was one of my favorites in camp last year, and then he got hurt, uh, and he was on IR. He is, for my money, one of the most natural pass rushers I have seen. Yep. Uh, one of the most natural pass rushers here in camp. To, to your point, I want to see him do it in the game. Right. Uh, I want to see him get after the quarterback. Uh, you know. Whether it's sacks or pressure, I want to see him get there. I don't want to right. see him playing the draw or the screen. You know, if you right. know what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, the other guy that I want to see is hey, when they do that. Chooks Okafor. <laughs> right. uh, to see this young man's development, he is very raw, obviously, but he is big. 
He is strong. Very. He is very athletic. And one of the things that I've been impressed with him is without good technique, he's winning his one-on-ones. Yes. Yeah. And Duncan uh, rule number yeah, two. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the other guy that I want to see is Matt Galambos. Uh, because Matt has played very physical in camp. Uh, he's done a great job. I want to see him in a game situation. So uh, we're looking forward to seeing what happens Thursday night. We'll probably uh, be back with you guys uh, uh, one more day this week. Uh, Absolutely. Because we, uh, we got practice. Is there uh, food involved? Yeah. Because there's food involved, you know, we're all here. Uh, they're off tomorrow, but we'll be back at practice uh, on Tuesday. He's Wolf. I'm Tunch, and you've been on Steelers TV. What are you seeing from the defense so far in camp that you like? Uh, I think uh, the communication is, is, is good, and there's some uh, some some decent tackling going on. We could be better at that, but uh, I think that's uh, what we need to do is find out who we got and, and what they do best. How do you get better at the tackle? I mean, that's obviously been a point of emphasis. We, we practice all the time. Uh, it's got to be part of our everyday routine of practicing, and uh, you know it, it should show up in the game if, if we keep committing the time to it. Are you looking forward to seeing what some of these guys are going to do tackling-wise, especially that back level in oh, yeah. this game? Yeah, we got to find out what, who we, uh, what we got and uh, what, what's, what do they do best. And so uh, we'll find out in some, the preseason. Some of these guys have said that tackling issue is something that, you know, bugged them, aided them this offseason, especially oh, with how good the defense was. Yeah. You know, we could, we could have been. Did that yeah, tip you yeah. <laughs> very much so. I mean, uh, you know, we end up, we could end up a whole lot better than we were. Uh, possibly, you know, uh, help us to get to where we want to go. And our, our, our goal is the Super Bowl. So uh, for us to get there, we got to tackle. Some new parts to this defense this offseason. Some veteran free agents brought in, some young guys. Uh -huh. Who has stood out to you so far? I think Terrell's done a good job for us. I think he's. Uh, uh, he, he likes the challenge of it, and he, he does a good job of talking. He understands that uh, you know he's a young guy, and he's willing to listen to the veterans and, and uh, talk with them. So uh, I think that uh, he's done well, and I think Morgan uh, Burnett. Uh, you know it, we haven't seen him a lot, but the, what we have seen him, he's done a good job for us. What can a fully healthy Morgan Burnett bring to the defense? Versatility. Uh, more than anything else, you know, not just playing uh, on first and second downs, but maybe playing in the box sometimes uh, on third down and stuff like that. And uh, we got to see, you know, if our guys can do that. What are you hoping to see Thursday night? Oh, I, I just want to see our young guys and see them compete and see if, uh, you know, we got somebody on this uh, team that deserves to make the team. You know, I'm going to cater to them in, in terms of. Uh, how we practice and stuff like that. The older guys are going to do some of the stuff that, we, that uh, we're going to we're going to do during the season. The younger guys are going to do the stuff that we're doing in preseason. Thanks, Bob. Sure. Man, that was really good, challenging, logistical work. Um, but it was important that we worked our way through that and got what we intended to get done today. We were fortunate to do that. Um, obviously, we're going to be safe regarding lightning and things of that nature. Uh, but to get short yardage and goal line in, to get an exposure to these young guys. Uh, in that phase of the game was very important, particularly because we'll be going into a stadium uh, this week coming up. And uh, you don't want to go in ill-prepared in any form of football. Obviously, short yards and goal line is a significant element of that. We're always interested in getting live short yards and goal line prior to going into our first preseason game. Uh, we did that today. We had an opportunity to get guys acclimated to those circumstances and see who can perform. And I, I love the energy. I love the ability to deal with the unforeseen, like lightning, go inside and come out and bring the level of energy, energy that they brought to that sequence. Uh, I was impressed by that. Um, guys still sorting through some day-to-day -day injuries. Nothing is new on that front. Um, I anticipate us getting a number of these guys back uh, on Tuesday, and I'll highlight it, but you guys will see it on Tuesday uh, as we push into the game week. We, right about that juncture of training camp uh, where you're hopefully you're getting over the hump of some of those things and you're getting focused on on, on the work that's going to happen in stadiums. I know that'll be our mentality as we come off tomorrow's off day. Questions? Mike, the goal line pass to Grumble looked like he hit the ground, slid out of bounds, lost the ball. Is that an example of the new rule? 
you know, I don't know that those officials are NFL officials. Well, so, they're not, but they talk you know, about it. I mean, so you guys can chew on that and talk about that for the purposes of, of unique and good discussions. Let's say it was a catch under the guise of the new rule. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a good enough look at it, to be honest with you. It was moving away from me. Well, it's your expectation if a guy hit the ground in a game and slipped. Again, by. I didn't see the elements of the catch. I, you know, I have an opinion regarding it after I look at it on video. I'd be happy to, to discuss it relative to the new rule because I just think the more we all get familiar with that, the better. And so, um, but without having seen it, it was moving away from me and my, my line of vision was blocked. Uh, I'll get back to you on that. Mike, there was that they ruled it a catch, though, on the field. They did. So I'll accept that until <laughs> until I get a chance to review it. There was that catch, and then Jesse had a catch on the uh, the, the corner route as well um, with, with good, good coverage on him. These guys are making some plays for you. It's important that we make situational combat catches, and that's really exciting. You know, you're talking about short yardage, you know, Jesse on a seven cut, getting a significant chunk of grass. It's important that you make defenses defend the vertical field and short yardage so you're not playing in the closet. Uh, that's what that play was about. It was awesome to, for him to be able to deliver that play and same thing on the goal line play. So, you know, it, it's, it's iron on iron. We need to be able to execute those things. We need to be able to defend those things. We need to be able to challenge one another in, in a controlled way. And um, I thought a lot of positives from a very abbreviated uh, form of work there. In general, do you appreciate how vocal and engaged Hilton is out here and opinionated? And Man, that, that's that's the way that guy has to play. You know, what is he? You know, he's not a big guy. You know, that's his edge. Uh, that's part of what allows him to be him. So I, I embrace that. Would DeCastro and Gilbert just stays off? Or? I know how DeCastro and Gilbert are going to function in short yardage and goal line. I've been looking at it for a decent period of time. I thought it would be more significant to see some of those others. So I did. Yes. Mike, as you lead up to the first game, what's your process for figuring out how to play guys when you have such a big roster? I'm going to address it on the off day. Um, you know, I really try to stay singularly focused on these opportunities that are in front of us and really look at it 24, 48 hours at a time. You know, way back when, when I formed the, the, the schedule, I, I agreed to, to address some of those things on tomorrow to best utilize and take advantage of today and, and, and keep the focus there.